One of the most impressive things about Basquiat's output is his use of language. It's important to remember that Basquiat was reading in French and Spanish and English from a very young age. If you look at Pollo Frito from 1982, which is really a masterpiece of this semiotic sign system, uh, you have these Spanish words, peligroso, pollo frito, alongside English words. Language is really utilized to the end of visual poetry. And when you see it combined with oil stick and spray paint and this outburst, this huge collision of art history that's going on in his mind and immediately, urgently projected onto the canvas, you find something incredibly powerful. I don't think we've ever seen anything like that before or since. And he was only 22 years old. Here, of course, you've got the three-pointed crown that was something of an autograph motif. You have skeletal figures, you have layered imagery. You have this aggregation of text and visual ciphers taken from what Basquiat had been doing on the Lower East Side, subway cars, downtown alleyways, famously in 78, 79, 80. And here you have it combined into this canvas, into this architectonic format that brings the street art into the gallery and presents it for a much wider audience. At five by 10 feet, this painting draws you in and you are immersed in Basquiat's vision. Taxi, 45th and Broadway, Broadway. from 1984-85, is a very large scale archetypal collaboration between Warhol and Basquiat that became part of Tony Schifrazi's famous show in 1985. It shows a white taxi driver refusing to pick up a African-American bystander on the corner of 45th and Broadway. And in fact, much worse than that, cursing with the sort of stream of cartoon-like hashtags. This painting is uniting two great masters of the second half of the 20th century. It has tremendous power and, of course, is not that surprising as Warhol and Basquiat were both two of the most potent social commentators of their time. Basquiat's meteoric life and career came to an end with an overdose in 1988. Untitled 1988 shows this incredibly economic portrait. It is a very, very striking portrayal of Basquiat's most iconic motif, the single head. Of course, nobody can know how prescient these final paintings are, but it is the final legacy of his career. like me. He was a lot like a lot of the people I grew up with in New York City. We didn't come from money, all we had was raw talent. You know, you look at his pieces and you see New York during the 80s, you see that urban, youthful, artistic spirit. The power that you have as a young person to get up, get out and do something. I always loved that about his art. He knew what he wanted and he worked really hard to get it. He catapulted graffiti into fine art. In a time when there was a level of whiteness and refinement. He was an individual who went against all of the constraints of what art was supposed to be. It was telling the truth. It has a, a childishness to it, a childish like wonder to it. The least famous things. The imperfections of humanity. They took that responsibility of being a reflection of the times. His truth back then is our reality today.
music. That's your intro. Jean Michel. All right. So tonight after this really good meal, you know, I want to go to the movies. Right? See Taxi Driver, which is like my favorite movie, I think. So I went to this movie on 48th and 8th, this theater. And then when I got there, I put my ten dollars in the window. The lady disappeared from it and came back, gave me back my ten dollars, and said, "No music, man. This is serious. This is a mistake. Open your legs." Yeah. So I, I was like denied entrance to a movie theater, and you know why? Why? Which is they said it was my appearance, you know, that I looked like a bum, you know. But it never happened to me before. I just sort of like don't go to that movie theater. So this this is what I'm why I'm here now, right? This is my appeal to boycott the Hollywood Twin Cinema, which is they show good movies, but after that, you know, everyone wants someone to prohibit something. You know, it's always there's always like a restaurant they serve the coffee wrong or something, or someone couldn't use the men's room and stuff. Oh, this, this is a sleazy movie theater. Well, this, but I mean, if we boycotted everything, everyone wanted to boycott. You couldn't go anywhere. You couldn't go on the buses. You couldn't take a taxi. Well, you couldn't, you couldn't take a taxi the because how many times? Underground or go to a restaurant for Christ's sake. Yeah. Well, and this is what you know. This is what happens in New York. It's just widespread now. Hello. Hello? Chris. What? Let me ask you something. On, uh, this is really something this week. Uh, how did you finally get, how did you get a, a buckwheat to appear this week? I thought he was dead. Wasn't Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? Hello? What? No, yes. It really is something though. Wait, are you going to get off the offer next week with Spanky too or what? Yeah, yeah, huh? we're making a comeback. Hey brother, hey bro, let me ask you something. Didn't you snatch my chain last week on the subway? Huh? Saying before that you were tired of being the angry young man oh. or the angry young artist. Is that uh, is, is that's a myth that's being perpetuated about you? No, no, that, that, that was something I said two minutes ago. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. We'll, we'll go back to the to the uh, that you've stopped doing works in the street. That was something that you did a number of years ago. That was that was a really really, really long time ago. I used to have, that was with um, some friends from high school and and just and some other kids, you know, we used to just, just drink Valentine Ale all the time and just write, you know, write, just write stuff on the walls, you know, and, and throw bottles and and grab, grab the wig off, off a trans, off a lady who works in the transit system because she took my, bat, took my bus pass me one day, just, you know. Wow. Just teenage, teenage stuff. There was, there was no ambition in your. Uh, no, there was, there was really no ambition in it at all. Uh, you, you were working under the name of Samo or Samo. that. Yeah. Samo, yeah. yeah. Samo. Yeah. And the, the works that were signed Samo were done by you and by other people. You. No, no, it was me and Al Diaz. What were some of the things that you used to write down? That would be too embarrassing to bring it up now. It was, uh, it was like stuff from, from my, like, you know, a young mind, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then the next thing I saw in the streets was uh, mostly like drawings is that, that, that you were doing, right? I did a couple of those, and then I, then I, got, then I got stopped by the cops more often, you know, so I guess I was getting taller and older, so it kept, I don't know, it seemed like a waste of time by that point. I mean, I really didn't want to do it, you know? So then you started working on canvas? Or yeah, more, more or less. How, how'd you make that transition? Was that something that uh, you've always wanted to do or something that just sort of happened or what? No, it just sort of happened, you know? I did more, more drawings, you know, up to a certain point. And, and at this point you had an Ambitions for a, an art career, to put it that way, or, or it's just a, uh, or that just sort of happened. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, that was. I remember the first time I saw your works on canvas was at the PS1 show. Yeah, right. And uh, were were those done specially for the show or? They were just... No, they, 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 were, they were just done. But they weren't done, you know... Done. For any reason or anything, you know? No. 
how do you how do you work? You just uh, work uh, start with a blank canvas and just start painting. Well, lately I've been taking all these paintings that are um, that are older, you know, and some that that, that I thought were, were, were less, less that less successful and um and cropping them to like four foot four by three squares here and, and then hinging them, you know, no. into the, these long kind of comic strip looking things. Yeah, and uh, that but but when when you when you paint them, it, are are you coming from uh, sketches or or just spontaneously working on the um, sketches, gl gluing paper down onto the canvases. I don't know. It's usually something to do it to do it th that day or, or, or the the images. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. Are you are you, you quick? How how quick do do these things get done? How quick? Yeah. It it, it depends. Uh, from approximately. Uh, yeah, just a, a, a normal canvas, four feet by six feet or something. What what is that? A day's work, then pulled out again and reworked or something. Yeah, usually like that. Yeah. And uh, I usually put a lot down in it, and then and I, that, that, that I take a lot away, and I put some more down, and then that, that I take some more. Away, you know, so it's like a constant editing process usually. Of uh, and what, what's what's. Uh, Determining what what stays and what comes and what what determines? Yeah. yeah, me, you, and uh, it's just uh, intuitive or mostly. I mean, yeah. I, I take it suggestions too. Oh yeah, people come in and say, uh, well, scratch I, that. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I mean, I, I work with I work with some people, you know, and I'll, <laughs> there may be some something that might, might be bothering me, you know, and I'll just ask somebody, you know, and if it's about the same, well, I don't. I it's hard to say, you know, it's not. It's not really one, one way, you know. No, and one of the most conspicuous things in your works is the way things are crossed out. Is, is that uh, you, you must like the way they look crossed out. Yeah, sometimes I just want to want to retract it. You know, so it might st stick out a little bit too much. You know, the words. Uh, so a line kind of blends it into the, to the rest of the painting at times. Yeah. So you, you surprised that your success? Yeah. Surprised. Mm -hmm. I used to be more surprised. You used to be more. Now you're. Now you're spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> no. I wouldn't say I was spoiled. Yeah. It's uh. What 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 do people like in your work that you or that that Got you said guy <laughs> that uh. And if it, they I I think that people are classifying you what as uh, an expressionist. Expressionist? Yeah. It happened a long time ago, didn't it? Expressionism? Yeah. Well, there's like a, there's a new expressionism. Oh, expressionism. What? Or it should be expressive. Yeah. Of and something or other. And and so and you're you're seen as as some sort of uh, primal expressionism. Is that? I mean, like an ape? Well, uh, let, let's let's. A, a primate? Well. Well, I don't know. Is that is that? You said it. I don't. You, you said it. Well, okay, um, you, your what what your art schooling is? Oh, I, I've had none. You've you've had you've had none. I tried to get into Parsons because I, I a couple of years ago I had like no money and or anything, right? Somebody told me that if you went to art school that they would pay your outside life too, you know? Yeah. So I looked into this, but it never really happened. But I'm kind of grateful, you know. That you didn't. Uh, you, you, you start working on like illustration board and stuff. I guess when you get to school, and you erase all the time, and you know what I mean? Yeah. And if your art is really good, you wouldn't be teaching. Write about it in, in, in the post on page six, you know. And do you like that? I mean. I'm sure in some ways it's, it's, it's fun, yeah. In some ways it's not fun? I don't know, I try to, I'd like to try to be, to remain a little, a little reclusive, or a little reclusive and not be just, and be out there, you know, just to, you know, to be, to be brought up and to be brought down, you know, like they do to, do to most of them. Yeah, because sometimes they can tell on you, don't they? Well, they, they always do. 
I can't think of one big celebrity type person who they haven't done that to. They tend to be. Uh, here and there. <laughs>